Hey everybody, welcome back to This Old Trike. Today we have something awesome that we're gonna do for you. It involves these awesome shocks and this awesome guy, Pat Farnham. Mr. Farnham, thank you for having us at your amazing shop today. Anytime, you, you've got a very nice spread of, of, I don't know, what are these things? What we're gonna do here today is we're gonna show uh, everybody how we can do a basic rebuild some restoration and uh, if we get into it and have some time maybe some modifications of your typical nitrogen charged gas shock for the rear of your machines right here we've got an 85 250r excuse me 86 as noted by the gold knob an 85 350x and we've also got an 85 tri z 250. today we're going to focus on the 350x we're going to do before and after we've got a as is 350X shock here that is just taken out of service. And then we've got one here that is disassembled and all the parts are shined up and ready. So hopefully we can do a seamless video for you guys here today and show you the ins and the outs, the do's and the don'ts. And uh, our focus here today is gonna be doing this at home with basic tools. I've got years worth of suspension tools to make my job easier. And I understand that you guys don't have this stuff at home and a lot of people don't so i'm going to show you how to do it with your basic tools here nothing special and we're going to go from there we'll see you guys soon all right so pat told me to bring one of my shocks uh 350x shock to be the the example of how to tear one apart so this was just out of a, a tote i had i don't even remember what machine it came from or what buy it came from but we're going to take that apart um, also, special treat, Pat was so nice to have a spring powder coated for me. This is the 250R shock that is going to go on my white 250R. When Pat restored this for me, geez, was that two years ago? Yeah, that's about right. <laughs> uh, he said, do you want me to powder coat the spring? I said, no, Pat, it's not going to be anything special. You know, it's just got to be cleaned up. Well, now it's turned into something special. So we are going to swap that spring out today. And this is the shock out of the fully suspended 200S previously owned by PJ Hart. And we're gonna look at why this is a pogo stick. And uh, Pat was telling me how the internal workings of a shock work. So we'll, we'll get into that too. So we're gonna stage, the, stage ourselves to tear this apart and we're gonna do that right now. We have removed the lower knuckle and staged our shock in the vise here and uh, we're getting ready to tear this down. And Pat has informed me that this is a, a messy process. So he's laid out some sort of you know, product here to, to catch stuff. Pat, what do, you, what do you recommend for that? Depends. <laughs> so <laughs> these, these aren't necessarily Depends brands, but these are you know, what you'd lay down. These are bed pads, yeah. right? So, uh... Actual oil mats are very expensive, and this is, again, another thing you can do at home. Go to Walmart, go to CVS, Dollar General, buy some bed pads, throw them down. It's a good way to control your mess and your yep. oil. Wrap it all up, throw it in the garbage when you're done. I put them right down here. We're gonna use our drain pan when we start taking the oil out of the shock, and now I don't have to worry about having a mess. Very cool tip, Pat. Pat has showed me a couple cool tips off camera. I'm sure we'll be getting those, but yes, yes. very cool. And then when you're done, they just go in the garbage, so. All right. We're gonna begin our story here. What we're gonna do right now is start the disassembly of this shock and uh, we'll get it all broken down and we'll go from there. So step one, removing the spring. Once the spring is off, then we can start with disassembling the shock itself. Um, a shock is nothing more than a hydraulic cylinder. So let's get to it. You're gonna start with a punch, your jam nut on the top, and again, this is, I'm putting an emphasis on using tools that we all have at home. If you have a spanner wrench, great. So crack the nut loose. And we're gonna get that all the way down. And the idea here is to release all the spring tension so we can remove the keepers and the shock itself. How old were you when you did your first shock? Where did you learn this? So I am actually an MMI graduate. I know, I know, everybody's gonna bust my balls for that, but uh, 
I went to MMI in 1999. The 1900s. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. And it's a uh, century ago. It's been a while. Um, so we got a crash course on that stuff. And again, there's nothing more like experience. So in the dealership, as I got out of school, rebuilding suspension. We're in snowmobile country too, so we do a lot of snowmobile suspension, uh, motocross. Suspension was always something that we had to get into, and it was something I had to get comfortable with. So now we're gonna start removing the pressure off the spring now that the jam nut is all the way down. And usually you can just turn the spring like this and get it down. Okay. So right now the nut is turning with it because there's enough tension on it. And there, now it's kind of free. So you can see we're at a relaxed point now. The spring is no longer tight. And we've got a little keeper here on the top, which yeah. is a little C-clip. And here's a nice pretty version of what we're looking at here. So this is the spring retainer. Mm -hmm. This is gonna sit down in there. And then you're gonna have your little keeper on the top here. This is gonna slide over across and lock in. You can yeah. see there's a small landing that goes around here for that to set up. But we'll get to that later. So, years worth of crud and stuff. You can probably have to knock this free. There's our little piece. And at this point, the spring's gonna come right off for us. So we're gonna set this aside so it's not in our way. And we're gonna move on from there. So now this is where you check and see what the condition of the shock is. I don't see evidence of oil leaking around there, which is a good sign, um, which means that it probably hasn't been ran dry. It's when they run dry that the damage happens. You start wiping out bushings, uh, the friction and that sort of thing will damage the shafts. So let's see. So that is actually still working. I don't hear any air in there. Um, obviously it's lost a little bit of charge of its life. Um, but all in all, I think we're gonna have a good start to a shock here for a rebuild. So, nitrogen. This is the part that a lot of people worry about and you do wanna take care when you do this. Um, we're gonna to wanna to take that out. This is your reservoir. Inside of this reservoir is the nitrogen and the oil is all through the body. These two components, excuse me, those two items are separated by a bladder. This bladder is inside of the body here. So our nitrogen is introduced into here and it's stored within this bladder and then there's oil all around. This is exactly what's going on in the pressure tank in your house for your water system, mm -hmm. if you have your own well. Um, and that is because you cannot compress a liquid, you can compress a gas. This is in here to act as a buffer between the two. Nitrogen is used because it is a very stable gas, one of the most stable gases we have on our Table of elements, a search for chart, chart of gases. I don't, I don't know that sort of thing, right? It's been a long time, Pat. Yeah, hoping you come out <laughs> on that one, Preston. Um, it's many brain cells we got. So we use nitrogen in here because it's a stable gas. So whether it's hot after a bunch of motos or it's cold, it's the middle of winter, it's going to retain its pressure at all times. People use it in their car tires now. It's a thing. So let's move on with getting that out of there. It seems our little stainless cap has seized onto it which is common as well. So we're gonna take a moment and try and get this little cap off of there. Might have to fast forward for this part later. That's stainless? Uh -oh. Yeah, I think we're gonna to have to pause, Preston. All right, we're back. We got off that pesky little nut on there. And uh, so if you run into that, a little bit of heat a little bit of effort, we're able to get that off. So, at this point, we're just gonna release the nitrogen. I'm gonna go ahead and, just like letting the air out of the tire, just uses a Schrader valve. So once that's out. That's it? That's it. There's a very small volume. So this is high pressure, low volume. There's probably maybe only a couple cubic inches of nitrogen gas in there. Hmm. My tank I've had of nitrogen is probably about 15 years old and I've wow. done countless shocks and it's still holding. So now that we've released the pressure, soft draws, trying to minimize damage. These are two little pieces of angle iron. You can just cut them yourself. 
put them in your vise like that, bend them around, gives you something to hold on to so you're not damaging your components. So angle put, iron or aluminum? Aluminum, sorry. Yep, yep. sorry. Angle aluminum, you're right. So what we're going to do here is clamp on to this rigid part of the body so it gives us a little, uh, little bit of rigidity here and I'll show you why in a second. So, you need me over there? Nope, um, we'll be fine for this. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take this cap and we're going to knock it down in a moment and that's going to reveal a snap ring. So Preston's going to pan in with the camera real quick here and you're going to see what we're going to do here. I use a deep well socket and we're just going to use that and tap down. And you can see that we've exposed the snap ring in that landing there. Yeah. I'm going to take a second to clean this up. So suspension is a precision uh, component. So everything fits extremely tight and we're also going to want to be very clean about this as we get into this process. But I'm going to take a little scotch pad here, clean out the dirt, rust, corrosion, stuff that's built up in there. We're going to pop that little clip out and I'm even going to clean it up a little better after I get this clip out and you'll see why in a minute. There's a little snap ring. We're going to clean this out a little more. And what we've got to do is we're going to have to pull this out of there. That bladder and that cap are going to come out in one piece and it needs to fit past all of this. So we want to make sure it's good and clean because you'll see where we pull on is a pretty fragile part. So you want to minimize damage. Put a little, little lube on there. Never want to be dry. So I'm going to grab my tool here. One moment, please. He's grabbing his tool. We'll zoom in on this 500cc Takati over there. Yeah. That's Pat's new toy. Look forward to getting into that one. All right. So this here is a basic uh, valve, this valve stem installation yep. tool. Yep. Um, we're just going to thread that onto here. And again, this is an aluminum nipple on there. Extreme caution here. We don't want to go breaking parts. So I'm going to screw that onto there and all the way. So that's aluminum versus what's on tires. A normal Schrader, is that brass? That's brass, but you know, you're dealing with a piece of rubber. I don't wanna, on the tire you're dealing with rubber, but I don't wanna snap the aluminum off oh, yeah. here. So now I can start to wiggle this and work out that bladder. Take your time or you're gonna end up with a face full of oil. And once that's out, will it start to erupt the, the oil? Will it push out? Uh, no, because we've okay. uh, released the pressure. Okay. I think we're going to have to pause again, <laughs> Preston. So I've gone ahead and cleaned it again. They will fight you. And it looks like we're going to have a little more success here, I hope. It pulled up some dirt that we figured was introduced to the system here uh, through sinking this in a mud hole at some prior date. So we're gonna have to get serious with this here. Shoo! I can't say as if I've ever had one fight me like this. This is amazing. <laughs> We're gonna need to take an intermission after All right. this one. Right. What okay. happened, Pat? So we had, uh, of course, the one for the video, right? It's always the one that gives you the most trouble. This one here uh, did fight us a little bit. So this is just supposed to come out that simply. And it got to the point where I had to resort to the slide hammer mm -hmm. and put it on the top and actually extract it. Of course, once you put a little pressure behind it, it came right out. So.
typically that doesn't happen i hope at home for you guys it just comes out easily but again cleaning and persistence is what's going to pay off for you guys so once you get to that point and you can remove this bladder here you want to give a quick inspection and make sure that it doesn't have any tears or holes in it um, again its job is to keep the nitrogen separate from the oil so here it is you can actually un or remove that from the two pieces here. You can see a little assembly grease back in there. That there is 1985 Honda grease. Wow. Genuine. So I don't know if there's a market for that, but maybe. How's it taste? Um, <laughs> you're gonna have to be the guy yeah. and let me know. Right, maybe right. later for after lunch we'll try it yeah. out. But anyway, so we got the two pieces here. Uh, this will be one of the pieces we'll clean up later. So we're just gonna set this stuff aside and we'll get on with our video. Cool. So we have now removed the bladder and we have struck oil is the term that I use. So we have now gotten to the part where there is oil down in there. All right. So we're gonna start draining this out. Nice crude oil. That's actually, well, it looks like it's, uh, it is crude oil. Might be dinosaurs. We're gonna pump that out a little bit. You don't have to get it all out. We'll get the rest during the, the other part of the disassembly. But I'm getting the most of it out so I can minimize the mess here today. Okay. So, there's something that I left out in the beginning of this video and that was uh, an actual pretty important part. Hose orientation. You can see that this hose here has an angle to it. It's pre-bent. You can see where this comes in from a certain direction. Take a photo of your shock before you disassemble it. You don't want to get it all back together, blood out nitrogen, or pay somebody to do it, uh, charge it for you, get home to find out that it doesn't work. So, again, reference that stuff. I've done enough of these, I know where it goes, and I have other ones to go by. You can find photos and so on mm. to get yourself into a bond. That's a good tip, Pat. That comes with experience, but... Yeah, been there. Our viewers are getting it for free today. So at this point, we're going to start tearing apart the shock in its entirety. I'm going to go ahead and pop off the remote reservoir and the hose, and then we'll get on to the internal components as well. Back here, disassembly only. Don't be assembling your stuff with these guns. Do it by hand. But for this part, easy enough. Pop that banjo bolt out. In case you're not aware of what a banjo bolt is, it is a bolt that has hollow holes in it and allows it to pass either gases or oils or something of that nature. So it is a passageway hmm. for the oil to flow. Why are they called a banjo bolt? You know, I've tried playing it and it doesn't sound <laughs> anything like what I've heard on movies. Huh. So I, I really don't know. Maybe the guy's last name was Banjo? Billy Banjo? Yeah, it might have been. That's what I'm thinking. I'm going to go with that. Billy Banjo. So we're going to set this aside for now. We'll get into the disassembly of the compression valve and how to take that apart in a moment. We're going to continue on with disassembling the main components of the shock here. So we're going to remove the hose now. Copper washers on either side. We will be replacing them. You can reuse these washers if you take the time to clean them up and copper can be annealed. For those of you that aren't aware of what annealing is, it is a heat treatment of copper that brings it back to its original uh, softness, if you will. Hmm. Um, so what you would do is you'd actually heat it up with a torch to a very hot temperature and then quench it. That's after you clean them, don't do it covered in dirt and grease. Um, and then you can most certainly reuse them. If they've gotten to the point where they're flattened right out, and there's big grooves on them, just replace them. We're talking a couple bucks here. But if you're at home and you don't have that choice, that's what you do. So now we're going to get on to the disassembly of the shock body, the meat and potatoes of your shock and what's going on here. Before we go any further, we're going to get the rest of that fluid out of there. Suspension is very messy, so if you haven't done it before, you're going to make a mess, I promise you. In the Honda service manual, they actually recommend that you use ATF for these. Again, it's nothing more than a hydraulic cylinder, ATF, transmission fluid. Uh, transmissions work hydraulically. So 
I have actual shock oil here. I think ATF works out to be somewhere around seven and a half weight, between seven and eight weight oil. I use 10 weight in all my shocks. Um, it just seems to be a good, uh, simple all around oil and it's probably what you'll find at your local store. So we're gonna take a minute here. We're gonna jig this up into the vise. Again, I'm gonna put a little rag in here because these things are messy. I'm gonna clamp this in here. Soft jaws so you don't damage it. Again, we're trying to make it nice, so let's not be the ones to make more damage. I'm gonna get my trusty little punch here. I'm gonna knock the cap off the top of this. And this is gonna gain us access to the seal head. So is there a little, little hole there? Yep, you've got little holes on each side of that cap here. Sometimes they're packed up with uh, grease and stuff. You can see it right here. And we're going to walk it up a little bit on each side here. Try to minimize the damage to this. And then you're going to notice when we get this off, it's going to be full of dirt, full of mud. Oh, wow. And here's where all that stuff builds up through the years. This is your wiper seal. This is not responsible for keeping the oil in. It is responsible for keeping the shaft clean so it doesn't hurt the seal behind it. Mm. And as you can see, it's been doing its job. It's been wiping off all that dirt. Wow. So I am going to take some compressed air again. And this is very similar to the removal of the bladder on the reservoir. There's a clip in there holding it in. We want to make sure that's good and clean. protection and conform to OSHA standards. <laughs> so now we got to get down in here to expose the snap ring in here. So we're going to take this punch and we're going to drive this seal head down just a touch and expose the landing for that snap ring. Okay. So now you guys can see the little clip that I've exposed in here. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a minute and we're going to pop that little clip right out. How many shocks do you think you've rebuilt? Whew. Maybe a couple hundred. Um, I wouldn't say they're all ATCs. Again, doing it in the dealerships, you know, so you get a lot of snowmobile shocks. Uh, mm -hmm. Most cases, they don't have springs on them, you know, like these do. Sometimes on the rear skid of a sled, it's just shock itself. Um, and they're never this dirty because snowmobiles don't typically see the mud. So snowmobile shocks are a completely different animal. Mm -hmm. um, but in the end, it's just a hydraulic cylinder. The idea is to get it bled, get all the air out of there, get healthy oil in there, good seals and bushings, and uh, a shock is a shock is a shock, as we would say. That's what I always say. So I'm going to clean up in there a little bit better. And if you thought getting that bladder out was difficult, oh boy, wait till you see the fun we're going to have with this. Um, a slide hammer is definitely a nice friend to have. We're going to see how this one goes. Okay, so now, going ahead and clean that out. What we want to use is a bolt. Whose quad is that? That is a good friend of mine, Chris Kuhn. Uh, we were uh, neighbors growing up. Long, hmm. long time friend of mine, he races that in the New England Dirt Series here. That is a hybrid, that is a LTR Suzuki frame with a 2018 Honda CRF 450 motor in it. Hmm. Um, that's his baby. So, I'm putting this bolt back into the clevis of the shock here. That way I have something to get a hold of with my little slide hammer here. And we are going to use this. For those of you at home that have to fight it, I'm sorry. I have the tool to do this, I'm gonna use it. I'm not gonna fight it. So we're going to take this right here. These are a nifty tool here. Oyster to death. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get this up on here. And this is where we're actually pulling the shock shaft, valve assembly, and seal head assembly out of the body itself. And that's it. That was actually up. a lot easier. It was much easier than I thought it would be. <laughs> So there, now we've got that part up, we will pull it apart and you'll see the inner work 
workings of a rear shock. So, here it is. This is the seal head right here. So what you're seeing is this is the component that has the support bushing in it and the seals so it keeps out the oil and it supports any lateral movement of the shaft and this portion. What you'll see down here, let me grab a little rag here. What you'll see down here is your valve assembly. The lowest part you see here is a little guide bushing. If the shock's been ran dry, that'll be destroyed and that's something you're gonna to wanna to, uh, address, replace. Mm -hmm. This is all your valving. This is what is responsible for the flow rate of oil through this passage. So when you have a shock revalved or reworked, this is what they're going in there doing. Hmm. If you're having a shop just rebuilt or reconditioned, all we're doing is going and changing the seal head and bushings. So that way you have a good seal and good support. How much of this is still available through Honda for so these Honda, type of stocks? There is not anything available through Honda anymore. Honda did not recognize this as a serviceable part through them. Hmm. So even though it's in the manual for disassembly and assembly. so. To get these parts, uh, there's a couple different companies out there. I prefer to use Moose. They actually make a seal head assembly for that. So this is the one we'll be reusing today. The original one would have been steel. This is aluminum. It's got a brand new wiper seal, brand new support bushing in there, O-ring on the outside, and then the oil seal, which is a little further in there. Okay. That's something you need to protect, and we'll get onto that later in the video. Now, is that the same size for 350X, 250R, 200X? It is not. Okay. So that is specific, although they all share a 14 millimeter shaft. And what I'm referring to is this part here, the nice shiny chrome part. Okay. So that is a 14 mil shaft. A lot of this stuff is interchangeable. So that comes into experience. So there may be some of you out there that will say to yourselves, as a matter of fact, Pat, I have used that and it will work. That may be the case. I'm just not aware of it myself. I try to use an application guide when I can. So it is available for 250R. It is available through 350X. And I just did one for a Tri-Z as well. And that is utilizing Banshee internal components. <laughs> so now I'm gonna take this body here. We're gonna drain the rest of this oil out, which is already pretty good. And at this point, Everything is disassembled as far as you can take it without actually taking apart the components. So now, when it comes to stripping this stuff down, I'm gonna start with the compression adjustment right here. This is what's responsible for the rate at which, or the speed that your shock can compress. So the tighter the setting here, the harder it is to push past through it, the more resistance. The looser it is here, the looser it is, the easier it will push down. That is all done and controlled through a spring-loaded valve that I've actually got a part right here, and I'll show you real quick. This is that assembly disassembled, and this is what we'll be going for. So behind the knob, when you take it off, you'll be looking at this. You'll remove that from the body, and then you'll be looking at a spring. Below that, you will see a cup. Below that, you will see the compression valve assembly. These go together like so. So the spring pressure that's applied here pushes on that cup and determines how much oil or how easily the oil can come through this valve as you compress the shock. The tighter the spring, the more resistance. The looser the spring, the less resistance. So you've always wondered what's behind that part of your shock. That is nothing more than a threaded piece. So as I turn this, that piece comes out and applies more spring pressure and changing in the valving. So without further ado, we're actually going to take that apart and I will show you a nice little nifty tool that I made at home that you guys can also do um, to remove that valve. The first thing you're going to want to do is get the knob out of your way. You can fight with them things. So these are actually Loctited on and I have one here to show you. You can actually see some Loctite still on it. So what you're going to want to do is heat that up a little bit and just soften that Loctite. It's not something that happens right away. We're not uh, getting this cherry red here. We're just trying to loosen the Loctite. So we're going to take a little bit of heat. We're going to apply it directly to the center of that bowl. So time is the virtue here. It's not going to happen right away. We're just going to let it sit for a little bit. And we're going to let that heat soak through that bowl and loosen up the Loctite. And with a little bit of luck, it's going to come right apart for us. 
So while that's setting for a moment, I'm going to grab my trusty Phillips screwdriver. And we are going to see if it comes apart. And just as I hoped, it came out without any issues at all. And you can see that there. Mm -hmm. So now it's not damaged, it's still reusable. It's not pretty, we'll get to that part later. So now, it's good and hot. Don't grab a hold of it too, too quickly. We're gonna remove this, don't just pull it out. There's gonna be two little ball bearings in there and two springs, hmm. voila. So, those are what we would call detents. Hmm. You see in the light here, you can see all these little indentations in the yeah, back side of the knob. Those are the click that you feel as you turn it. How about that? There's a little O-ring in here as well. Again, we're servicing the shock, every component. So we're not just gonna ignore this stuff and put dirt back into the system. We're gonna remove this stuff and clean it. So we're gonna take that O-ring out. And its purpose was to seal that and keep years worth of mud and dirt out of there. And as you can see, it looks like it's done a pretty good job. It's quite clean in there when you figure what are these almost 40 years old now? Yeah, just about. So we're gonna take these little ball bearings. We're gonna keep track of those. They're very important. And behind those is a little spring for each one. I love my trusty little uh, drywall screw here. Good hmm. for extracting, extracting springs on carburetors or any of this type of work here. So there it is. I've got the last two little springs out. And now we're going to remove the compression valve assembly. Heat is your friend. Heat is your friend with a lot of things, especially when you're dealing with aluminum and that sort of thing. So I'm going to grab this little one here. This is the part we're removing right now. So this O-ring sealing on there, the nice thing is, is it's kept all those threads good and clean. We're hoping that it'll just crack nice and loose for us here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a minute and heat this up. I'm not going crazy here. I'm just giving a little heat to it. Sometimes the O-rings will stick to the body and make it even more difficult to remove it. So we're gonna let, again, we're gonna let that heat soak just a touch and I'm gonna show you my fancy little tool I made here. This is just not your run of the mill Sears Crescent wrench. <laughs> this is my homemade spanner tool. You can see these two pins here. Um, that's how you're gonna remove these. And a lot of shocks have uh, applications that require a tool like this. Yeah. All I did was stick it in the drill press, drilled two little holes, and then you can use some hardened uh, work steel Drill bits on old punch is what I suggest, which is what I believe they use on this. It was an old drift punch. I cut off some pieces and then just JB welded those in there. So now I've got an adjustable spanner wrench. So let's just see how good it actually works. We're going to go ahead and drop that into those holes. And we're going to apply a little pressure. Hey, how about that? No damage to the part. And it still works as a crescent wrench. You can throw it in the air box or your three-wheeler and go out riding. That way you have it. There you it. go. You know, fits around the side of the trail. That's slick, Pat. Those trail side shock rebuilds. Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a, I hate those. That's a, me too, man. Gets me every time. So here is the adjuster assembly for your compression. You can see that little screw there. Mm -hmm. So when you're turning your knob, that just comes down. And you can also, in the side of that, see the spring that I was referring to in the earlier portion. Mm -hmm. We're going to go ahead and pull that out. There's our nifty little yeah. spring. Trying to keep this stuff clean. I'm gonna go through a cleaning process here shortly and all this stuff will get thoroughly cleaned once again. And uh, I can't stress to you how important it is that everything stays super clean. So we're gonna go ahead and pick out this assembly here. They are tight in there. Again, these are precision components. So I might have to fight with them just for a little bit, but they'll come out. So this valve system mechanism in here is the same as 250R 200X similar or? Um, they're very, very, very similar. Um, for the most part, yes, to answer your question, they are the same uh, here that is removed. The bodies are the same. So if you guys have a damaged body and you've got extra shocks around, the 250Rs are notorious for beating up the body where it clamps to the frame. Once you get it stripped down to this point and everything is removed, this body can be used from different machine to different machine. This is a standardized component okay. of Showa. Um, so there it is. There you have it. That is the remote reservoir, completely stripped down. 
no internal valving anymore. This part right here is ready for cleanup and restoration. Um, we'll get to the processes on that in a little bit. Cool. The other component here that we're talking about is the body that's stripped down with the exception of the hardware. Um, we'll get to that in a moment as well. Just uh, one thing to remember when you're reassembling these, make sure that these are back on at first because you won't be able to get them back on. They need to be the first things to go back on. <laughs> Ask me how I know. <laughs> so now we're to this part here. This is the shock shaft. This is your valve assembly, your seal and bushing head, and then of course the protector cap. And then this is your bottom out rubber or dampener. So as the shock, here it is, this is fixed in your body. As you come down and bottom out that shock, this is the buffer that takes that hit. Mm -hmm. This is that bottom out hit. The 350X ones seem to last pretty long. The other ones are all usually made of foam. So the 250R ones will be crumbled. If you're gonna take on this job, usually what I end up ordering for people is that seal head and that new bottom out foam or cushion there and have those available before you begin the job. So right now we're gonna go ahead and take this apart right here. We are going to remove the valve assembly and seal head so we can get down just to the shaft itself. So let me grab my wrench here. I thought I had it all out. I was wrong. So this valve system is what accounts for the rebound, not the compression? Correct. So yeah. rebound is the action when your shock is coming back, the rebound of the shock. Again, it's, it's, it's controlled through orifices that change the rate of flow for the oil. So the smaller the orifice or more compression you have on it, the harder it is for the fluid to flow and the more resistance you'll get. Um, so as I'm taking this apart, I've got a little nut and a bolt here. I'm gonna get to that in a minute. Make sure you have this ready. So we're gonna take this right here. We're gonna put a wrench on the top of this nut. We're gonna crack this loose and we're gonna start removing this assembly. This is kind of unique to a 350X. This part is different from a 250R. On a 250R, you've got just a plain old nut holding it all on there, that's it, and it gets peened over with a hammer um, when you reassemble. The 350X, this nut actually is the rebound orifice. You can see this little piece of metal that's coming up through the top. Mm -hmm. That's actually in the shape of a D, if you were to look down straight onto it. I'm not sure if you can get it from the camera. And that goes all the way down and is connected to this. So if I sit here and turn this, you can actually see that turning on the top. Yeah. So, why, you ask yourself, does that go through there? I was just asking myself that. <laughs> That goes all the way up and connects to this nut. This is not just any old nut. Inside of this nut, you can actually see a little D-shape, and that's where mm -hmm. it receives that little shaft we were just pointing out. When you turn it, you're effectively turning this washer here. And as you turn this washer, there's four different size holes. A very small hole here, one over to the side here, here, and here, from smallest to largest. So as this is turning, you put them in alignment with this hole here. Mm -hmm. That is determining how fast the shot can rebound. So if you've got it lined up with a tiny hole, then that's only gonna allow so much fluid, it's gonna return slower. So it is gonna be important when we reassemble this that that gets put back on there and that we don't just jam that on there and make a mess out of that. We'll get to that part in the reassembly. So I'm gonna set this nut aside for now and I'm gonna get back to this nut and bolt part. This is the valve assembly. This is the magic of a shock. This is where the art and the talent lies. The part you're not seeing here, it looks like they're just a bunch of plain washers. This is not just a plain old washer. You can actually see these machine washers. There are literally hundreds of these stacked throughout this shock. And they are in a certain order that is your valving. It changes the rate at which the oil can flow through here while you're in a traveling motion. You do not want to drop these. You do not want to mess up the order of these. There is no book that tells you how to put these back. You might as well just give up on everything <laughs> if you fall or drop it. Wow. And people have asked me, well, what if you do drop it? And the answer is you, you don't. <laughs> don't. You don't drop it. 
So, and you don't want to mess up the order. So here's my little bolt. I'm going to put this on the top here and I'm going to start pushing off this assembly little piece at a time, making sure, and if Preston can get closer here, you can see that these are hundreds and hundreds of little washers. And not only are they just stacked on top of themselves, there's other washers. I'm going to set this down so yeah, you can see. Don't, don't goof them up. There's other washers in between these that actually give spacing. Wow. There's tons and tons here. Do not mess them up. So we're going to push that all right up off the top and boom. So that's everything. That's our whole valve assembly. Oh, I left that washer off the top here, guys. I almost pulled a no-no. This needs to go back on there. And then I'm going to put that nut back on there. That's saving everything together. You can put it in a bag, save it for another day, whatever you're doing. But that's good and safe. So now when you go to put it back on, you're like, which way did it go? It can only go one way. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. You smart. I try. I try. <laughs> uh, so now we're going to remove the seal and bushing head assembly. That's this part right here. We're just going to pull that off. And voila. Mm -hmm. So this is the OEM one. This is the aftermarket one. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're going to be changing today. Set that aside here. This is the little cap here that protected everything. Now I've got everything here all laid out in a manner that might look like hogwash to you guys. I know what all this stuff is. So yeah. if, if you're not aware, take the time and make a nice workspace. This is important that this stuff gets kept track of and put together correctly. We're going to take off our little bumper here. We're going to set that aside. We're going to pull the shaft out of here, and that's it. We now have a bare bones shaft. We can inspect that for pitting or damage. This looks to be in very good overall condition. You may see a little bit of rust pitting here. That's okay. That's where this bumper was sitting down there the whole time. That seal will never get down to there and hurt it. It's important that where your range of motion is, is, is in good shape. And if you look closely, you can see some shadowing starting here and to here. So this is pretty much our working mm -hmm. range for the shock and that's all in really good shape so I feel more than comfortable moving forward with these components. Um, so we're going to take a little break here, we'll regroup in a minute after I clean up and we'll get to the uh, little bits and pieces of how to make this stuff look pretty and then we'll go on with assembly. Awesome. Thanks guys.